are you are. <laughs> I have someone I'm simply dying for you to meet. Uh, do, 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 do. come with me. This is Tarek. Has to be Tarek. Your Majesty. Oh. May I present Miss uh, Evie Fry? Your Majesty Queen Victoria. You're the one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Yes, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. Thank you, Your Majesty. I really must be going. Miss Fry. May I have this dance? No. Mr. Starrick, you've had your fun. But the game is over. Uh -uh. Listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time is a wonderful thing, Miss Fry. It heals all wounds. No music. We may make mistakes while dancing. But the mazurka ends, and then we begin again. Problem is, everyone forgets. They trip on the same mistakes over and over. People can learn. Can they? Isn't everyone around you repeating the same steps? But if one man could remember the dance, could know the time, then he could change things for the better. I have had enough. This dance is nearly over. Soon, the people will forget the generation on this terrace. The ruin you nearly wrought on London. When the music ceases, Miss Fry, your time is up. And mine... Begins. I think I'll take to fatherhood like a duck to water. Which I believe. What's that you said? That's not to say both efforts as grace. She doesn't know a thing, I promise. Why must you wipe all these different noses? That's not good enough. <laughs> Yeah, Jacob can sneak. Jacob can run. can whistle.
No, put him in the booth. Shit, put him in the booth. Why the hell didn't I see you? In. Pick him up. Yeah, I know, I'm walking on it. Uh, I have to get rid of those two. I can open this door, I don't want to open this door. It will open to the right. No oh, shit! What was the goddamn entrance? That's all I needed to do.
You see how many Templars there are here? Freddy! Staric peppered the regulars with his own men and took several guards hostage. Your weapons are in there. Do a quick change. Do a quick change. Oh. Look. Yeah, I see him. Right. I'll kill the imposters and rescue the captives. How? It's impossible to tell the difference. Oh, I can ye tell. Of little faith. I can tell. And I'm low on time. We got this. Go right, right, right. Took a wrong turn. <laughs> I'll eat your eye. to find the real royal guards. My rifle just fell from the floor. And the roof. <laughs> Sheesh. Great. Playing tricks on me. Here. Stop right bloody now! Oh. Oh. Make yourself scarce. I'll get you out. You do the rest. And oh. kick him out. But let me clear the room. Hold still for a moment. You have my thanks. Thanks, mate. You're welcome, mate. Me to do this. 
Kill him! How the hell did I get that one get past? Right, that'll be all. You're good, Evie. Everything's good. to the waltz is one must lead with one's right foot well done. everything all right my dear do you require assistance i never liked balls <laughs> how the hell did he run away so quietly ah here the location of the vaults go just like that no plan no time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption. No time, no time. Is that time? No time. No plan. Let's kill. No, no. What? What are you doing? Exploiting. I warned you, my boy. But you. Do not listen. Requiem's cart and pache. So nice that she's doing it dressed all in white. Mr. Sarek! You forgot to escort me home! 
You need to take the shroud away or he'll just heal. Let me rectify my mistake. Another prize. I will begin again. And I admire your pluck, but there is little you can accomplish now. Come close! Take the shroud! Someone needs to take the shroud! Climb, damn it! Uh, shit! Shit! Ruler who will remain vigilant, who will prevent the city from de no amount. <coughs> Take the shroud or he will heal, idiots! <sighs> what the hell? Climb! God <laughs> ah, damn it! No, take him. You cannot maintain this. Zarek. Your reign is nearly over. It has barely <coughs> begun. Come on. Henry! The shroud was... <coughs> Jacob! Shroud. Leave me! Now! <coughs> Shall we? Let's! Together! <sighs> Together! Yay! London will perish without me. You flatter yourself. The city is bigger than one man. I would have created a paradise. Old by the elite. city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order. You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were.
Nobody should be that much that long. Shame we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? Are you going to wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. A fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry is stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. <laughs> I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry. Yeah, no one checked if he's alive. <sighs> it's a big world out there. With London in the centre. Perhaps not the very centre. I came as soon as I could. Do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? You helped. Henry, you saved it. Oh. I think you belong in the field. With me. Oh. Um, the Queen. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Abilene, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Didn't I mention? <laughs> Mr. Abilene informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is, Your Majesty. Well, yeah, if I guess. If I step forward. Are well, we going to get knights now? And you? My brother, ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Green. Mr. Fry? Mr. Green? Neil? The Majesty says Neil, you Neil. Invest you all in the order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abilene implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abilene tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. <laughs> we shall meet again. And Miss Fry? Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. Thank you very much. <laughs> Didn't, didn't have really time to partake last night. Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. Sir Jacob Fry. Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. <laughs> 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 Such children. <clears throat> we all kept the world guard, use the key to enter the white drawing room, legendary assassin belt schematic.
That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go! Let's get the Shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Contact! <laughs> that skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want him to bleed. Get him! Really? Except the least efficient way. Hold still, God damn it! Go, Rebecca! Only the mission matters! Understood! Sean! Ah, oh, shit, come on. Galena, we need an exit! Secure the vault! All targets are righteous! We need to go! Now! Understood. That uh, would have been fun to play that. The shroud! Forget the bloody shroud! Stay with me, Bex! Please! The shroud would help her! We go! Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the Shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. She kind of looks like Ashley Johnson. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the Shroud going to help you create a new clone? It's not... And the shroud is wrapped around the body. It scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're not making a clone. You're going to recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs> Hello? It's me? Brought the shroud as you asked, but... I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all. Uh, we started defeated the Templars on the weekend, but London is not yet free. I did conquer all of London's boroughs. I have new memories with Queen Victoria. Legendary Assassin Belt. Dinosaur Talon. Aegis Cloak. A 
Oho. That's the special one. Yeah, I didn't get the mouse. It's really pretty. <laughs> Entry 10. Crawford Staric is dead. Jacob and I mended our differences. Our philosophy had decided to abandon entirely. Father's adage that relationships will compromise the brotherhood. I think that his love for my mother proves that on this point he was mistaken. And we agreed to stay in London for the moment. I have agreed to travel with him to India in the near future. He's awaiting me now, so I will close here. And Victoria, ally! Alphatsteric, dead. Prince Albert, what? Royal Correspondence. Phoenix Project. His obstacles led us insane endeavor to conquer human freedom, this time with the aim to sequence the triple helix genome of the first civilization and use it to explore precursor genetic memories and reverse engineer pieces of Eden. How long for the simpler days when all they wanted to, to do was create satellites to control people's minds. In late 2013, Obstergo discovered a large quantity of Picasso DNA in the body of one of its employees, John Standish. It turns out Mr. Standish was a sage, a Picasso consciousness reborn inside a human body, giving it a much higher concentration of first civilization DNA. Obstergo wasted no time in searching for other examples of these sages and hunting for other relics in the hopes of obtaining more samples. We spent the last few years trying to prevent them from doing just that. Last October, I helped Gavin's cell of assassins locate and destroy a secret Templar laboratory dedicated to the Phoenix Project. That was very heroic, if I do say so myself, and I did not scream like a baby, despite what some people might tell you. Still, Abstergo has a head start on nearly unlimited resources. We have to do more with less and hope they don't progress too far, or we'll be in more trouble than usual. And just to say it one more time, I did not scream like a baby. Okay, let's play what we have. Uh, DDS Genetic Memory Export, Renato Auditori. What? 1355, Motriani in Tali. The myth became a miracle. The holy winding sheet has arrived, freshly plucked from Templar hands in France. I do not want to look at the thing, but I must confirm for myself. I meet my brothers in the villa. My brothers tell me that the Shroud's owner, Jeffrey de Charny, suspects nothing. We have paid many men and women a fortune to replace his Shroud with an intricate replica, to remove his disburden from history. I can feel something, the moment it is lifted from its box. Evil, a sickness in my belly, I begin to take my notes. A man's shape has been burned into the Shroud, arms to his sides and palms forward. According to the Church's records, the visage was, has changed throughout history. Different men? Who are they? He appears to have been tortured. Havik itself is yellowed, old. It has bloodstains on it, which are to be expected with wounds such as these. Satisfied that we possess what we had sought, we fold the shroud and put it back into its box. I hear words, faint in my mind. One might mistake them for spirits, but for me they simply reinforce the importance of my task. What better place than our walled city to hide such abominations from mankind? We will bury it deep and set up measures to ensure it remains hidden. We will burn church records and send claims of fraud to religious leaders. Who would know its flaws better than the ones who forged it? Renato Auditore, son of Domenico and Isabetta, was a pretty forgettable assassin, although he was largely responsible for turning Monterione into an assassin stronghold. The Auditore family only really gets interesting with Renato's grandson, Mario and Giovanni. Luciano Pazzetti confessed the truth behind Mon Montefeltro's siege. He was not here for Monterione. He sought what lies beneath her, something my ancestors hid. We will find it. We must find what the Fiorentini were seeking, be it a relic, treasure, or junk. I have called in my architects and historians. Together we will solve this mystery. We studied the auditory journals and uncover many cryptic messages and vague references. We cannot make sense of them. 
I walked the architects of Monterioni's building layout and we discussed the possible hiding places beneath each one. I know there are secrets beneath the villa that my assistants will not find in any record book. However, I do not believe anything I have found would be so interesting to our enemy. Surely the Pieve di Santa Maria Assunta is a wise place to search. After all, churches have long kept some of mankind's darkest secrets. We spend an afternoon searching, but come away with nothing. The auditory have a crypt in Monterioni filled with secrets. My brother Giovanni explored it thoroughly when he was younger, and though his findings were shocking, he found the artifact. The well. Searching auditory's family records, we find that one of my ancestors had the old well drained and then further excavated. A senseless act, unless he was hiding something. Alvaro, as promised, here is the first delivery of DDS Terra. Some of it is very fragmented, but still cleaning up the mess ROD2 made of everything. I bring my soldiers with me, as well as a miner, and we descend into the old well. We will spend the day down here if we must. I am sure we are on the right track. Most of the water has been drained from this well. I search the earthen floor for any markings or switches. My men must think me mad. Some wooden structures remain from the excavation. I climb them to investigate the highest, higher reaches of the chamber, but I find no clues. I silence my men and stand completely still. For several minutes we simply listen. Nothing. I push on rock walls, focusing on extrusions or loose stones. Nothing moves. I find no traces of anything mechanical and no ropes. Perhaps this was just a simple well. It was foolish to think we would find anything but rock down here. We are down for it. Wait! Miner's flame, it dances as he approaches the back wall. There is a chamber hidden there. We put all our strength into pushing the wall and it slides. Wait, the miner's flame. <laughs> I love this guy. We entered a narrow hallway. There are carvings on the walls and panels on the floor. The miner, mouth agape, steps forward and is shredded by razor wire. We pull him back, but he is already dead. I sweep my sword before me as I slowly progress through the corridor. I encounter more razor wire and hack through it. A false floor tile. I stumble, but one of my guards catches my shoulder. I hold my torch near the floor, but I see no bottom to the pit. Now my men turn back. I do not blame them. We begin to anticipate the traps and disarm many of them before they can trigger. I narrowly dodge a triggered arrow and it pierces the chest of the man behind me. We have found it. Not some ornate treasure, but a simple wooden box. I advance and realize my misstep. A pendulum swoops from the ceiling. I try to dodge, but it splits my face, taking my left eye. I spit curses at the architect of this infernal chamber. A voice booms in my skull. Your pain is temporary. Ignore it. My men believe the box contents will heal their wounds, but I tell them we must not open it. They draw their blades and attack me. I remind my men that I am a better swordsman. But the attack has won. I hold them back with the flat of my blade and the toes of my, foot, of my boot. They will not listen to reason. The artifact has not been hoarded like some prized treasure, but hidden away to be forgotten. Who knows what it might unleash? I am forced to strike down two of my men before they can gain the advantage. One man pushes past me and tries to open the lid. I stab him through his back. What a cruel treasure this is, hidden away in the dark. After what we have suffered, after slaying men I caught my friends, I must look inside. I must know, but I will not. I want this thing out of Monterioni. Whatever it may be, my brother will know what to do. As I carry the box out of the chamber, it continues to speak to me. I will not submit. Remain still, it demands. I move faster. Clear your mind. I'm not sure I will ever be able to clear my mind again after this day. You will be healed, it promises. My wound has already stopped bleeding. What is this thing? It attempts to stun me by screaming in my head. It nearly succeeds. The voice does not seem hostile, despite its urgency. Perhaps it does only wish to heal, but I will not take a chance. It is done. I have hidden the damnable thing in the villa. Soon Giovanni will arrive to move it away from here. It becomes the Brotherhood's problem now. Roto Calderon, 1498, Agandello. My order keeps an artifact in Agandello, one with powers I cannot explain. If it can heal my child, I will travel any distance. I will need a horse, but I cannot return to the Covenant to retrieve my own. I pull a soldier from his saddle and challenge him for his mount. I chose a dangerous victim. This man is skilled with a longsword. I take note of the man's armor and exploit his weaknesses. A swift boot to his crotch drops his guard. We lock blades and he pushes me to the ground. I 
I barely dodge his next move by throwing dirt into his eyes. We are starting to draw a crowd. I must end this soon. Parries my attack and returns with a thrust to my chest. I spin, yet he managed to draw blood. Soldier is my equal, but my desperate tactics best him. I take his horse and return for my son. Someday I will repay Gila's kindness. But first I must finish what I have started. I secure my child and set out to Agandello. <clears throat> I knew we were being chased, but I had hoped for more time. We have only made it as far as Firenze. I will have to stop to plan an ambush. Alexander's men will be here soon. I leave my horse in an alcove and bring my son to hide in the forest, my bow ready. The baby cries. I put an arrow through the back of one man's head before he can turn to face me. One of the soldiers... One of the soldiers, probably their leader, has remained on his horse. I shoot an arrow into his flank. The beast hurls its rider from his saddle and tramples him. The return fire. I hear the arrows rip through the foliage behind me. But none manage to come close enough to worry me. My arrow goes wide. I correct my aim and the follow-up hits. At first I believe I have missed my mark, but my arrow has nearly buried itself in my target. The rest of Alexander's hunting party turns tail. I have spooked him, but for how long? I am back on the road immediately, pushing my horse hard. My brothers have travelled from Agnade Agnadello to greet me, swords drawn. They know why I am here. They will not allow me to use the shroud. None shall stand in my way. Vincenzo, it seems only yesterday we trained together. I try to wound him, but he is not holding back. He exposes his side and I react. I will mourn him later. Why do they face me one at a time? Together they could easily take me. One of our recruits sweeps low and I swing high. I have left him with a horrible scar, but he may survive. I hear the soft click on the wrist blade and immediately thrust behind me. My soul connects with an assassin moving in for the kill. Ugg, a thrown knife digs into my shoulder. I shudder as I pull it out and hurl it back into its owner's right eye. I leave my brothers either dead or disabled and continue. There is no returning to the Order, no returning to Roma, only Agnadello. My enemies will come in greater numbers if my brothers do not reach me first. I will give my life for my sons, gambling everything upon a legend. For I am empty in faith, I am filled with desperate hope. So beautiful. It is a plain thing, carefully folded inside a simple wooden box. But it is also so much more. It speaks inside my head. I feel that it wants to heal my wounds. No, I am here for my son. I wrap his tiny body in the shroud. Flawed material, it tells me. I tell it he is not flawed, but it insists. I order it to heal him. I feel as though my head will burst. It takes all my concentration to keep from blacking out. My son screams. I have to force myself to leave him in the cloth. What chance does he have without it? I cradle my baby, wrapped in the shroud. It is humming an eerie song and the voice in my head matches the tune. Your pain is temporary. Ignore it, it demands. Does it not understand that he is a mere infant? I remove my son from the shroud. He is no longer crying. He looks up at me with glossy eyes and I wonder if he has truly been healed. Has this been worth the pain I have caused? I return the shroud to its box and leave. Giovanni Borgia, 1503, Rome, Italy. What did the shroud do to this poor kid? He should be dreaming about the Renaissance equivalent of sunshine and lollipops, not murder and politics. I've never seen anything like this, Herodito. In my dreams I am older. I speak words I do not understand in my waking life. Yet in this phantom life they are clear. I do not know who I am, but I have flashes of what I have done. I have travelled far and I have taken lives. I am a messenger and a deceiver. Brothers stand before me. I am not one of them yet, but I soon will be. Tonight I ascend. Where other men blindly follow the truth, remember, nothing is true. Where other men are limited by morality or law, remember, everything is permitted. They leave their mark upon me, a symbolic sacrifice, searing iron burns the flesh of my hand. All that is left, the leap of faith, they lead, each brother plummeting from the tower and landing safely below in a bale of hay. They are like eagles, truly free. I do not hesitate. The fall feels like a flight, exhilarating. Perotto. Giovanni dreamed as Perotto. That means that he must have had Lucretia's memories in there that would make Oedip Oedipus blush. This is bad, bad stuff, but you need to dig deeper. I will work on preventing this from reaching any Abstergo reports, Erodito.
Much of the project legacy data was compromised by the hacker collective known as Erudito. I am not sure we can trust the information anymore, but I've included it for completion's sake. Pardon. My brothers have placed a child into my care. His family has long served us, but he is still a pup. I am to teach him the ways of our order that will start at his age. He is a scrawny child, bone thin and tall for his age. He will have some difficulty at first, but his body will adapt to the training. Francesco is eager and we as well as, as thorough. He repeats his questions. He asks me to repeat my demonstrations as he studies. He will not move on with lessons unless he is satisfied with his results. At times I grow frustrated because he is a perfectionist. Francesco is quick to anger. He charges me without purpose. Sword flailing. I lightly tap him on the side to show how my blade easily passed his uncontrolled attack. I encourage him to calm himself. In battle, emotion is a weakness. I repose and knock Francesco's sword from his grip. He takes it poorly, slumping his shoulders and insulting himself. I pick it up for him and tell him to try again, explaining how to keep a better grip on a weapon. It is important to let a child be a child. I leave Francesco in, with a group of children his age in a nearby village. They put together a small parade and Francesco takes the lead. I cheer for him in his toy armor. I believe Francesco will make an exceptional addition to our order. The boy is strong, despite his physical limitations. Speaking with him is like speaking to an adult at times. He is wide beyond his years. Pause. I need to rest my voice and do some side missions. Dynamite boat. And I'm no longer unwelcome in Buckingham Palace. Everything all right? Of course, if I. Stop in your Templar faction from bringing dynamite into London. Sure. This will probably be a two part though. Newly honored friends. Your Majesty. We understand that with Crawford Starrick gone, a certain secret society finds itself searching for leadership. An upstart faction seeks to enter London and seize power. Do you feel your life is in danger, ma'am? No. Rather, I fear that the people of this grand city may suffer. I call upon you to foil this traitorous plot. You can depend on us. You will meet my loyal aide at the docks for instructions. Your work begins immediately. Well, you don't say no to the Queen. Speak to Fleming. Mr. Fleming. I am Alfred Fleming. I run Her Majesty's Secret Service. First things first, we need to clear the area of anything that might alarm the enemy. Like that police carriage. Would you kindly dispose of it? That's it. Gotta go. 
Easy now. What else? Agents are here disguised as civilians. Get them into position for our ambush. A ship will soon arrive from Boston. Its cargo, dynamite. Its crew, Templar. What say you to greeting it with an ambush? If we must, we must. I could use a hand. Um. I have a job for you. You all right? Assassinate from a crane. Brought to me at the station, alive. Go on. That has some time. Gotcha. You're nothing to me. Would you care to tell me your plans? Go to hell. Now, now. Oh, Steric may be dead and gone, but the Templar Order will never die. We will rise again, like a phoenix from the ashes, bring the world to its knees. Yes, well, best of luck with that. I wonder what all the Archie Barchi's about. Archie Barchi. There's some sort of scuffle over there. Thank you. I'll carry on from here. My people are recovering their explosive cargo. You did fine work today. I will uh, have a chat thanks. with our distinguished guest here to see what schemes he and his friends are brewing. Do let me know if he says anything interesting. Of course. Back to this. Uh. 
I am tangled in nightmares. I have never felt love. I have felt love so strongly it strangles me. I am Borgia. The Borgia are my enemies. I am assassin. The assassins are my enemies. Cesare is my father. Pareto is my father. Otto. I am Pareto. I am Giovanni. I am lost. I am drowning in a sea of letters. I am a strite. I have never learned how. Words I cannot understand cover every surface in blood red ink. I try to write over them with my quill. The blackness of my ink is lost in the scarlet pools. Papa strikes me with his blade. Cesare stabs me in the back. I cry. I fall. I want to be free of him. I want to kill him. I will get into trouble. I will cause trouble for Lucrezia. I must run to Zia. Everything for Lucrezia. Men in white hoods surround me. Am I here to teach them? How? I am a child. Are they here to teach me? My students. My executioners. My future? I know too much, but I know nothing. I am innocent, yet racked with gu by guilt. I chase an object of power. I have no faith that it will work. I know how it works. It will heal him. It will heal me. It will remake me. My dream threatens to burst. It is too much. Will I ever wake? Will I ever sleep again? That's everything. No, there's more. I'm a baby again, sick, dying. I carry my baby. I have the shroud. He wraps me in a blanket. The blanket hums. The shroud hums. You are undeveloped. Heal him. Subject is undeveloped. Damn you, heal him. Who is talking? Who is yelling? Come closer. It hurts. Pain is temporary. I do not understand. Comprehension is unnecessary. Operation is possible. Difficult. Do it then. So warm. So cold. It draws the life from me. It makes me feel alive. Is it done? Yes. Did it work? Answer me. Did it work? Conscious? Are you there, Conscious? Sleep, child. Forget these dreams. Actually, oh, it'll just run through here. Big red and wet carpet. Locomotive. Stop the Templars from sending a train full of dynamite into the crowded station. Mr. Fleming has attempted to force a confession from your prisoner. The miscreant refuses to talk. Will you speak to the villain and learn his secrets? Leave it to me, Your Majesty. What about the cake? I was promised cake. Uh, Tell me that was an accident. No. going to Scotland Yard.
Fight him. Yeah, that's the jail cell. I'll bleed you dry. Must I pummel you severely about the head and shoulders, or can we simply I swear talk? To you. Might as well. The order was to load a train with explosives at Westminster. It'll detonate before reaching Southwark Station and kill everyone aboard. You people and your damn dynamite. When does it happen? It doesn't matter. It's the next train. It should leave at any moment. You'll never make it in time. Watch me. Come on. Separate the bomb from the other cars. Um. blew up your mind is damaged child you dream of dreams past lives lives that once will surface again you must think or you will be lost dreams of the cavern again I run my phantom hands along its walls and I recognize every flaw there is writing here, but I cannot read it. Carved into texture, burned into shadow, answers unreachable within my slumber. I am flying without form, I am the wind. No, I am upon the wind. Pulled away from the city, across field and forest. Once again, I study my path, though I know it will be lost when I wake. I hear them, warnings, prophecy, doom, nightmares. I am needed, I need. I see a face, it is my own, and then it is my father's, my Caesar. The flesh upon his skull picked apart by carrion birds. Cleopatra and Caesar kiss while Roma burns. I shout to Caesar, turn around, turn and save your people. 23 blades, 23 keys. Access information easily shared, unimportant, irrelevant. We drop to our knees, our breaths catching in our throats as we try to grasp the spectacle before us. Giovanni is dreaming. Brutus is awake. This same cavern has haunted our dreams. We have spent countless nights exploring it in our sleep. We were compelled to find it. It is here that we will hold counsel. Here we will plot the downfall of our enemy, our friend, our papa, our dictator, Perpetuo. Forty of us. 
Each senator, one child, a dreamer. Each liberatore, each an assassin. The first council has ended. Our problem is clear. Our response undetermined. Caesar moves away from the senate, placing his trust in foreign rulers. Adopting the ego and pomp of his Egyptian whore, Cesare moves away from his family, leaving Giovanni at the mercy of his mad dog. Caesar refuses to rise when he addresses us and scoffs at our concerns. He has created his own private senate, filled with deceivers, manipulators, people who have no business in Roman affairs. Papa walks with monsters and killers who do not care about Roma's people. My brothers are eager for blood, but I am not certain I can spill it. Roma will not be free until Papa is dead. We have found traces of whatever pulled us towards this place. Whispers, lights flickering through cracks in the earth. A doorway that is also a puzzle. We must find a solution. You have lost focus. No, I have found purpose. You only see the past. No, I see the future. I am filled with glorious purpose. What is Her Majesty doing? Back down the escaped leader of the upstart Templars. Uh, she's walking away from me. Our much lamented husband adored these gardens. He called them his one safe port in the midst of the mad seas of this world. We miss him dearly. But never mind all that. To business. Our Mr. Fleming has learned from the Templar prisoner that an attack is imminent. But before we could learn more, he escaped custody. He is believed to be hiding in Westminster. We capture him for us, that we might learn his secrets. He won't be free for long, ma'am. I promise. But first I'm gonna pick up that... that owl. Then I'm gonna find that glitch. I heard it a second ago. Fine. Why Westminster? There you are. Easy. You will have to rendezvous with your fellow conspirators soon enough.
to a station. Easy go. You won't find the likes of these anywhere else in London. One explosive's ready to go. All in this here carriage? What took you so long? Temporary setback, nothing more. Got you done pinched, did you? Shut it, you balmy mug. <laughs> I'm going on ahead to scout the location. Bring these explosives to the safe house and wait for my signal. Yes, sir. Too many innocents nearby. I'll snatch away the explosives before continuing the hunt. Faster! <laughs> Whoa! Uh, I thought I was gonna do him. If we can't blow up a building, we'll just have to settle for blowing up an assassin. Tara, come on! Come on! Go, go, go! Move it! Come on! All my racing days have led to this. Come on! No, no, buses are blocking the road. Come on, Move close. It! That's a lot of time. Come on! Come on! Faster! Yeah! How much time did I stop with? Too close. I need to put an end to these upstart Templars, and quickly. Everyone go! Hey. Wait for an explosion. That's a social glitch, not what I needed. There was one. Maybe I'll get something out of it anyway. It's not what you said. Nope. Okay. I wonder what the social glitch service was.
uh, four more in the Thames. No, that's not what I wanted. We drop to our knees, our breaths catching in our throats as we try to grasp the spectacle before us. Giovanni is dreaming. Brutus is awake. This same cavern has haunted our dreams. We have spent countless nights exploring it in our sleep. That's what I already read. Wake up, child. I am awake. Look, my eyes are open. I must find the blade. I must stab Caesar 23 times. I find the dagger in the room where Caesar and I practice with wooden swords. It hangs high on the wall, but I climb up a chair. It does not let me use the real blaze yet, but it feels right in my hand. Today, the 8th of March, Caesar will be in the theater of Pompeii. I sneak down the hallway. Cleopatra is asleep in her room. This is fantasy. Think. The other senators are not here. We had a plan. They must be afraid. I will go alone. Caesar is snoring. I am small, but I can kill him in his sleep if I am quiet. I lift the dagger and look at his face. Papa? Electo grabs my arm and pulls me from the room. I try to cry out, but he covers my mouth. I did not mean it. Please, just let me go. Pain is temporary. The DDS recorded Giovanni's dreams. Fascinating. Remind me to talk to Melanie about dream simulations as a potential entertainment product. I think this one. Shit! <laughs> oh, there's another glitch. Nothing? Two left. Nothing. Twenty nine. Niccolo di Pitigliano, January fifteen ten, Don Lonigo, Italy. Should be dead. The assassin's blade struck true, yet I still draw breath. A shroud. I was sure he would find it, but I still feel its presence. I hear it in my head. 
It's just a faint whisper in my head, but it demands action. It speaks in a language I do not understand, but I sense what it means. Get up, it demands. I try, but my wounds are too severe. Pain is temporary, ignore it. Concentrate, close the wounds. Open your eyes, sleep is death. Do not believe in your frailty. Come closer. Drag myself over to the floorboards beneath my desk and pry them open. As soon as I see it, my mind blazes. I don't see another one in the tent, but I do remember I need to do World War One. Let's just finish Victoria's missions. Don't have all the points of interest. Before that, let's pick up this. No, I don't really read them, I'm just collecting. Where's Victoria? Looks like she's on the second floor. Templars from blowing up the House of Parliament. Great! The final group of upstarts are making their last desperate stand. They have penetrated the Houses of Parliament and plan to detonate whatever explosives they have left. Please find Mr. Fleming, so we might put an end to this once and for all. Sure, where is he? Why don't I have my fast travel points? It's 700 meters away, come on! Hmm. 
Oh, ils étaient sur les stricts derrière. And I can hear the glitch. There's one left. Why can't I see it? Same way to travel. Restricted. <laughs> Secret agent man. Secret agent man. Oddities of the human behavior. Multiple targets inside the palace, all armed and dangerous. Making matters worse, the Prime Minister has gone missing. I need you to deal with the Templars. Target one is in a nearby corridor, surrounded by civilians. He has explosives on his person. You need to take him by surprise. If he sees you, he'll detonate his bomb. In the meantime, I'll search for the Prime Minister. My game for wins, dear. <laughs> Too true. You are an expert on yourself. Do you know who might benefit from this book? No. Who? <laughs> Don't kill me. Please. Oh, oh my God. I'll do anything. Anything you want. Just play. Let, Let me go. I've been treated so Let me pick him up and out of here. Well done, but there are still more bombers about. They must be removed quickly and quietly. Only count four. Behave. 
The call! She's a little Still more bombers about. They must be removed quickly and quietly. Shit. Still more bombers about. They must be removed quickly and quietly. Do you think she has also someone to look after? a young lady afflicted by madness. That's an odd place to find a woman. <laughs> ah, it's going to get quite the fright. Ah. Ah. How do I get him to do that? No, nothing you need to worry about. Escape Come from Bedlam. What are you saying? That's the creepiest woman I've ever seen. Ah, oh, that's not nice. Let's get that guy over there. The end.
Don't want to take the chance, I'll just kill all of them. Come on, She's found herself a nice spot. I wonder what's going on. She hiding from the coppers. Get out of here! You gotta let me live! Lucky I'm trying to keep out of trouble. Oh, come on. Catch the general. He mustn't escape. Don't come any closer. Please, I don't want to die. Have mercy. What you hiding from, miss? Steady, Prime Minister. I'll have you free in a moment. Not another step, assassin. You've lost, don't you see? The Houses of Parliament are rigged to explode at the last stroke of twelve. There's nothing you or anyone else can do to stop it now. The Houses of Parliament will be leveled. Centuries. Why would you kill me? Find those bombs before they go off! Wait. Oh, okay. Clock striking. <laughs> Looks like bother to me. Yeah, the side of the courtyard. So you admit it, they're too much to drink, ain't they? All right, miss, you're feeling fine. Nice place to put it. And the last one on top of Big Ben. I must protect my sources. Come on! No, don't get stuck now! No, come on! Got it. to get that. <laughs> so I hear another glitch. I'm not free to 
answer, don't That's they? very true. Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you, my young friend. Now, please come with me. You and your sibling have been summoned. What? Again? You have honored us with your loyalty and courage. Long may we strengthen the Empire together. Your Majesty, we will always work to ensure the safety of the people. But with the greatest respect, our philosophy forbids us from assisting with the expansion of the Empire. Perhaps, ma'am, you could consider putting an end to your imperialist desire. <laughs> <laughs> I understand and respect your position. Bound as you are by your creed. What do you know about you the creed? Indulge me one final time and receive these gifts. Goodbye. And may God bless the noble fries. suppose you'll be offered any more cake. <laughs> no, we've had enough cake. Oil cloak. Cloak of victory, royal cloak. Upgrade preview. What I thought. I'll stick with the Aegis. Minerva's, yeah. I touched the artifact and my world is enveloped in brilliant light. Did I die? Can this be? No. I must... I must wake up from this. I extend my arms and watch them stretch into the void. Eyes within eyes. An infinite sea of perception. Stop staring. Please, stop staring. My tongue catches a playful wind and rolls like a spindle of red ribbon. It sails skyward and I grin. I reach into the white and it stains my hands. I watch it travel through my veins. I try to close my eyes but I have none. I shake my head and the room returns to normal. I can move again. Pain is extreme, but I am rejuvenated. I grab the artifact. My manner is burning. I must flee this place. I can only hope the crowd outside has dispersed. I stumble over two of my guards. Their throats are slit. This stairwell is impassable. Burning debris has fallen from the floor above. I am not sure I have the strength left to find another route. My fingers tremble. I nearly dropped the artifact, so I tuck it under my arm. The hallway is completely dark. I proceed with a hand scraping along one wall and hope for the best. I test the window, but it has been sealed from the outside. I gasp for air as I drop into the grass outside. Where will I go? If I can even escape Lonigo, I will not survive a trip to another town. Unless... That's everything, except World War One. Closest viewpoint, this one.
Out of way. Give me something. Wait, is this the edge? It's the edge. Finish this before. I have no choice. Whatever power this thing holds, I must try to unleash it. I wrap myself in the shroud. I begin to vomit, a little at first, but then it flows red as I violently expel my insides. Too much. A thousand voices shouting at once. My head cannot take it anymore. My body falls upon itself. My muscles pull tighter than should be possible and I feel my bones snap. I feel the shroud's power. It is tearing me apart. I cannot control it. I am no longer in control of my own body. It reconfigures as the voices command. I have stopped breathing. One of my eyes has gone blind. The other is slowly losing focus. I see the assassin approach. Disgusting, he says, as he pulls the shroud from my dying grip. How? How did he know? Well, that was disgusting. I want to see it happen to someone else. Any volunteers? Keith Scipione, 1944, Milan, Italy. This is crazy. What did they do to tick off my bosses? Goose chase in the middle of war zone while our own boys are dropping the bombs on me. For what? Chance that it might be the real thing? Right. Between it, been at this nearly 20 years and I don't even believe it exists. I keep my head low even though I'm dressed as a local. The bag full of money feels like a ball and chain. If people are suffering, they wouldn't think twice about snatching it off me if they knew what was in it. Looking for the restaurant. Hopefully it still stands. Meeting with one of the Begutiani, who are apparently a bunch of artsy thinker types who sit around all day contemplating the importance of sitting around and contemplating. Place looks empty, but the door's not locked. Inside, the man's waiting for me. He's nervous. He should be. I've drawn my pistol. Ain't no patsy. He answers by pointing to a wooden box sitting on one of the benches. Sure doesn't look like much to me. I sit my bag down on the table next to it, keeping my gun level. 
You lift the box lid and peer into it. Something's folded up in there. Smells kind of musty. It's dirty as hell, too. It'd be this guy's laundry for all I know. I dangle the metal company logo at the end of my keychain and watch it jitter as I move it near the box. I glance at the man and he nods his head. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe it's just the rumblings of some nearby bomb. It doesn't stop. Well, slap my ass and call me Sally. Let's do this! Come closer, Cypher. Are you there? Your readings are going haywire. Force, get out! You have to get out! No, I'm in. Hello. In the past, you hunt for one of my artifacts. But I come to you today to speak of the future. Follow Lydia Fry. She will lead you to me. Lydia Fry? 